Welcome to another edition of your on-air series for the Heritage Month 2022. This week we're talking about places to go to. And my guest is Steve Ababio. He's a world traveler, he's a photographer, filmmaker, a videographer. He, he does all. And this week we're talking, today we're talking about the eastern part of our, our travel around the country. I remember asking him about which two regions fascinated him the most since the Volta region was definitely one. So we're going to start our journey from the Great Accra, this time headed east. And he'll tell us where we should go to what we'll see. Steve, great to have you again. Thank you very much, Bennett. I was pleasantly surprised when you said the Volta region was in your top two because I was recently named an ambassador for the region to promote tourism. Okay. And I couldn't believe how beautiful my own region was because I only go for funerals and festivals and things. I never really went there for leisure until this recent time. So I was happy when you said that. So if I'm moving from Accra to Volta region, where should I start from? What should I see definitely? Well, if, if you're moving, I, I think there are generally two different routes you yes. could take. Yes. Um, you could take one uh, northeast and go through um, uh, the Adomi Bridge yeah. and, 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 uh, and so on and, and go. The other route you could take is through Tema yeah. and go through um, Ada. Go through Ada, Pram Pram, Sogakope, okay. you know, and, 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 and switch, switch it up and go there. In fact, when you get to Sogakope, there's two things you can do. You can go north or you can go south. Okay. So either is a very different experience in and of itself. Mm. Both are fantastic. Mm. My preferred route would be to go through Sogakope. So that you can decide whether you want to do the southern thing or and then, then yeah. do the north. And then if you, if you do that... Personally, I find doing the north from Sugakope more visually interesting and exciting in terms of the landscapes and the features that you encounter um, along the way. Um, it's, 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 it's almost like you're in a different, a different country, in a it's different surreal. space. It's surreal, exactly, that's the word. I'll come to that. So let's assume we want to do the southern part in our first leg. Yeah. So I hit Sugakope. And I want to do the southern part to Aplau. Where should I go? What would I see? So the southern part, you, you, you see that the, the Aflau, there's a main Aflau road. Uh -huh. But you don't want to do that. What you want okay. to do is turn right off and head down towards the Keta Lagoon. Um, so you enter the Keta Lagoon protected area. And then if you look at it on a map, for me, that's what I do. I take a map okay. and I look at the map. Is Where would be interesting that I want to go to? And looking at the map, the fact that the Keta area is this little sliver, mm. you know, between the ocean and between the lagoon, mm. I'm like, hmm, what would this place actually look like, mm. you know, physically when you see it? Mm. So that's, that's what motivated me um, to make that trip. And it didn't disappoint. For me, Keta was... I've, I'd never been there, but when I got to Keta, it was like, there's something familiar about this place. That's what I felt. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful... In fact, I have a very interesting story about the first time I ever went to Keta. Okay. I didn't intend to go to Keta. Okay. Um, I was a young... I, I think I just finished my national service. Okay. And I'd broken my glasses. I needed new glasses. Back in the day, with, as a young boy without much money, you went to Jelukope. Jelukope. To go and get your glasses. Everybody knew yes. about that place. So I took out from Accra and to Jelukope. I'd never been there before. No one wow. had ever taken me there. I found my way to Jelukope. I uh, got my glasses, but by the time I got my glasses, it was a bit late. So, so I couldn't stay. get a car back. So I didn't know anywhere. I didn't have any money to stay in a hotel. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anywhere. So I had to come back to Accra. Couldn't get a car back from Jelukope. They said, oh, go to Keta. You get a car from Keta to come to Accra. So I, said, I went to Keta. Keta too. There was no car. They said, oh, if you can get to uh, um, Aflao, you will be able to get a car. Now, now there's a road from Keta to Aflao. At the time, in the those one... days, there was no road. It was just the lagoon. And when I got to the lagoon, it was just the, the last canoe. Are you serious? <laughs> was full, about to go to Aflao. So you see the tip of the canoe, like I was on the some pion mouth like that. With like your this. new glass. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my motivation because wow. that that September. I went to uh, Tech first year. Okay. It's interesting because now uh, friends from there tell me their hometown, like Keji Kope, part of it is gone. Yeah. Nature is fighting back. But I, I think even that is a sight to behold, isn't it? It is. The fact that the sea is taking part of the land, even though it's distressing, yeah. 
it's still a sight to behold. It is. It is. It's 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 phenomenal, and yeah. I feel that it also has created a certain. Uh, um, 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 it has strengthened the people in a certain way. It's given them a certain resolve that we we, we nature is fighting us, but we are also we are, we, uh, yes. we are surviving yes. and we are making things yeah. work. Yeah. Um, just recently, um, I, I have a friend who runs a, a resort um, around the Anyanui area, and when the the waves cause the problem, they kind of it's blocked the way from Anyanui to Ada, so people cannot go by canoe. It mobilized the community, and wow. they are actually digging a brand new canal through the through the mangrove to open to, a channel so that they can go to. Amazing! And I was, I was looking, I was like, "This is this is wow. amazing." The people are actually, you know, getting up and doing something for themselves, which is very refreshing. You know, the other thing I noticed, I don't know if you observed. Me. So my feeling for the beaches, they are much cleaner than Accra, and I had a different feeling facing east. When I got to the, the beaches, Uwe, Tegbi, Keta, Uti, and all Uti, those, yeah. there was a different feel to the beaches than the skip, the central. Yes. I don't know if you got that, that there feeling. There is. Yeah. It's a different feel. And even the, 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 the sand, yes. the granular nature the of the sand, it seems it's, it's very different. It's yeah. different. It's, 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 it's a whole it's a fascinating vibe by itself. Yeah. Yeah. And then what, the other thing I noticed was the towns have become much closer for urbanization. So you can actually walk yes. from... I mean, Jerukopa is now Keta, essentially. Yeah. And you can just walk to where... It, it's not that far. It's if, not. If, if, if you it's, want it's to. It's actually not. Yeah. And it's an interesting walk. Yeah. And one of the things that always fascinates me is, is the fact that it's, it's such a broad um, sea turtle nesting area. Mm -hmm. um, or oh, sea turtles. Yeah, sea turtles do a lot of nesting there. We are still having that struggle where we're trying to convince people to stop eating the turtles, allow them... <laughs> <laughs> to come and nest and it's important because apparently turtles feed on jellyfish okay and 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 jellyfish feed on 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 fingerlings in the ocean so the turtles are helping the fishermen by removing so this is god's own way of sort of exactly. organizing the system exactly. so we disrupt that so we are eating the turtles and then, then the, we are complaining the jellyfish. that we can't get the fish. jellyfish will eat the fingerlings That's and then it. That's it. Uh, i don't know if there's still a lot of mangroves there as well because yeah. the issue of mangroves for me from not just for sightseeing, because of the role they play in conservation. Yeah. I don't know if there's a mangrove preservation effort. I also don't know about a preservation effort because there are the mangroves are still there. They are quite extensive, um, but you also see a lot of mangrove wood, you know, mangrove firewood things happening, particularly in in Anyanui. Yeah. I don't know what the effect is, but the mangroves are also important because. You know, we also have uh, West African manatees. We do. That kind of... These are also mammals, right? Yeah, but they're they look also like, mammals. They look like a mix, a mix of turtle and tortoise or something. Uh, no, manatees are more like... A, I don't know if you, you see walrus. Yes. You know, they kind of look like a cross between a seal and a walrus. Yes. But they are... We have some there. We have some there. Again, the issue of us eating our wildlife <laughs> comes up. Because the way I found out yeah. was the fact that people had caught them, you know, and were butchering them. So we eat everything uh, that moves. We, we eat everything that moves. But uh, these are the same mammals that, you know, in other countries are attracting tourists. People are swimming with them and so on and so forth. Um, this may not be of tourist interest, but I couldn't help but notice the number of people farming shallots, tomatoes, irrigation. I was fascinated. I, yeah. I didn't know anything could grow in sun. Yeah. And, 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 you know, they have these pipes that, that was, stick up and was, the water sprays all over. It's a beautiful it sight. fascinating. I think the soil is particularly conducive for that. You know, for that. Yeah. That's interesting. So, let's assume you've done the south. You've done Keta. So, so fine. We've done the south. Okay. Mm. You want to move north. I know there are a couple of routes. You could do Joje and say, let me drive through Ho. But I guess you're saying, go back to Sogakope and go through Mafikumase Adidome. Yes. That, that would be your preferred yes. route. That's my preferred route. What, what would you see on your way to Ho? So, so on, on the way, I mean, it, there's a lot of farming, farmlands and so on and so forth. Very vast, flat uh, plains, a lot of mechanized farming going on. But you get to a point where you just suddenly see these boulders. Huge. Huge, yes. you know, I don't know whether to call them hillocks or, yeah. or what, you know. On the left and on the right, you Adakulu. have these... Before you get to Adaklu, Adaklu. You, there, there's a series of them. Between Adidome and, 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 and Adaklu. Adaklu. And I, they, they, they fascinate me because they're just 
like like some giant they just appear they just appear out yeah. of nowhere yeah. you know and it's not like a mountain range where you see connectivity they between just them stones. they're just giant stones you know in yeah. there really beautiful then of course a dark road just pops out <laughs> of nowhere at dawn the f i mean the first time i saw a dark road, i was like what is this we're leaving home very early in the morning and the clouds were still down it was just unbelievable and then the back the way it protrudes yes. out it's like yes. how did god create yes. this how yes. did it <laughs> it's 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 an amazing it's an amazing amazing feature yeah and uh, and the fact that it's visible from who it's, it's almost as if that's whose uh, yes. signature when or you something. enter when you get to adaklu mountain you know you are close to who yeah. yeah absolutely absolutely it's, it's a beautiful have you been picture. up there up there i've been halfway i mean the plan is god willing this year you will go to get to the peak yes yeah. we'll do it when we there's a sound clip i play on air where the guy talks about antelopes, antelopes yeah. i mean i don't know if you i don't know how many of those things actually are there i'm told there's a lot of different things on the mountain i i can't confirm it will be interesting to see mm. um again there's the issue of i mean when when human beings approach animals scatter so yeah. Seeing them might be difficult, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go and yeah. see what we can find. So, Adaklu Mountain is definitely one to, a place. Definitely a must, a must. But you were saying that the most interesting place you went to was, uh, is it, you've been to the Monkey Sanctuary? Yes. We, we Tafiatome. Tafiatome Monkey Sanctuary, yeah. Where is that? Um, Tafiatome is, is you, you head north, um, you go through Abatime, you're heading towards. Uh, Liatiwote and uh, Afajato okay. area, and it's it's a detour on that road. Is Afajato as interesting as hyped? Well, just talk about the hills. I'm told there's Mount Gemi, there's a major there's Afajato. Just walk me through this okay, whole. Okay, so so when you exit Ho and, and yeah. you go through the hills, yeah, um, you you drive up it, then you come to you come to another set of of hills, very hilly area, um, which is the Avatime area. So there's a group of towns um, that are nestled in the hills. And my understanding, if, from, from the little interaction that we had with them, we found out that the language they're speaking was not ever. So we asked a few questions and found out that, so these, these the language is, is one of the Guan yeah, languages. Guans. They actually escaped from war to settle in those areas. So there, there's a specific number of towns, you know, that comprise of the the, 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 the um, the Avatime uh, communities Area. and and it's people are so friendly and so welcoming and the landscapes are beautiful mm. the waterfalls amazing it's it's yeah i mean it's a place that you definitely have to stop over Absolutely. definitely so this is the Avatime area yeah what about the Logba Tota is that in the same area so Logba Tota is not exactly in the Avatime it's close but it's you you have to you, you basically drive out of there and almost come back into another mountain range from a different direction mm. and there also it's like you climb 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 and you wonder ah, this means i'm climbing where am i going until you get to the summit and this this town just emerges out of nowhere <laughs> wow it's another i mean ghana is a fantastic place yeah. ghana is so for, for for the volta region it's not just the beaches no. the landscapes no, 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 no. Uh, the and landscapes stuff. The, the, the the towns and you see the way they patch them on top of the hills yeah. the air is different mm. the atmosphere is different the people are happy mm. you know it's a whole different vibe we we went to uh logba tota went to see uh, apom falls okay there we were we were led by three 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 kids three young guys from the town mm -hmm. they had their own uh uh, Bluetooth boombox. Wow. And they, they, they jammed us all the way <laughs> to wow. the falls. It was the most fantastic experience. I have friends who went to Mount Gemi and they thought it was a very interesting. In fact, there's a tourism book that says you have a Kodak moment at Mount Gemi because when you get to the summit, it's a beautiful site. I think a German missionary put a cross yeah. up there. A metal cross up there. Still there. Which is, this, the cross is still there. Some even believe it's some kind of, it's an antenna of some sort. Or, or, or which the was used to receive transmissions, urban legend or something like that, but it's still there. We actually spent the night, we spent a night on, on, on the mountain. This is the Heritage Month on a series where talking 
places of interest to visit on the eastern leg. We started with the Volta region. My guest is Traveller Steve Abbey. When we come back, we'll talk about the eastern region. OT, if there's anything, all the way through to Bimbila and the upper east region. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Heritage On Air series on City Breakfast Show, also on Breakfast Daily. My guest is traveler, photographer, filmmaker Steve Ababiu, basically helping me appreciate the beauty of Ghana on the eastern leg of the trip. And we started with the Volta region. Clearly, the Volta is a place to be. I tell people the eastern region is one of the most diverse regions in terms of people, right? So you have Aquapim, Achim, Kweu. Krobo, Guan, Ever, yeah. Asante, all in that region. And it's also very different. How does a person even navigate the Eastern region? Because it breathes Eastern region, right? Yeah. And it is. Dewu is Eastern region. Nkoko is Eastern region. Yeah. So it's, it's very. It is. It's, it's big in a very interesting way. It is. It's, it's very big and it's very diverse. And. Yeah. I think the way to navigate is just because, you know what, you're a Ghanaian. You uh, go everywhere that you need to go and do what you need to do. Because if you say that you're going to drill down to the nitty gritties, yeah. you know, you can easily get confused. Mm. So, yeah, it's huge. One of the, I think, for me, and, and, and I, I want to give credit to Jijo Klake. Okay. Um, Adventures of a Ghanaian Girl. All right. she, she, she went to a couple of waterfalls also in the eastern region yeah. in a part of the eastern region i didn't even know okay. existed so i you know spoke to her she gave me directions uh -huh. and we went there so there's a town called Asesewa. apparently it's a well-known market Asesewa, yes for Asesewa. That area. yeah so above Asesewa, i've uh, been to Asesewa actually so good yes i know Asesewa. so north of Asesewa, mm -hmm. there's a, there's two beautiful the landscapes in there are also really, really, really incredible. Mm. Saw some beautiful waterfalls in there. Mm. The roads are not very encouraging. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't have a, a high car, I would not I would strongly <laughs> discourage you. So there you, are some beautiful waterfalls hidden, hidden northwest of Asesewa. Yes. I yes. didn't know this. A market very in Asesewa. Cool. It's uh, a book, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I've been there twice. I loved it. Absolutely yeah. loved it. I didn't know. So there are waterfalls hidden there. There are. And we saw two. I mean, given the landscape, I'm sure there's many There's more. more. You also mentioned on the last time we spoke that there was some waterfalls behind a brie or something. Yes, there is. So, okay, so we come back down from Asesewa. Mm -hmm. um, if you make on down, heading back towards uh, Kufuridia. Kufuridia, um at Huhunya, you make a right. Mm -hmm. um, Boti Falls is there, mm -hmm. Akar Falls is there. Mm -hmm. And then if you come and instead of going towards Kufuridia, you make a left to head back towards the Kwapi Mountains, uh, you, 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 you go through and climb up at Edukrum and then come along the ridge. The, the, the waterfall you are referring to is, I think it's Obuadaka. Obuadaka. Yes, Obuadaka, very beautiful waterfall. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, there's a road that goes from Ebri to Nsawam. I, uh -huh. Uh -huh. So if you take that descent, as soon as you descend um, to the right, if you look to your right, you see some rolling hills beautiful landscapes i'm told it's there's a very there. famous eatery there as well so i hear I've, i'm yet to sample it but Obuadaka. i saw a couple of photos of Obuadaka. it looks pretty nice it and is. it's not that small it's actually it's not a huge waterfall but it is sizable enough to yeah and it's, it's seasonal so in the dry season it's not so much but in the rainy season it's it transforms it's like night and day what is the experience yeah. like filming waterfalls for somebody like you I, I get it. I know you're on, you're on a waterfall project. What is our waterfall that makes them so fascinating and picturesque? I guess the fact that the water is, is, is falling from a height in certain quantities. And then where it falls, the effect of that fall, you know, usually would create a pool, you know, which in itself is, is a total joy. I mean, me, I am, I don't know, I, I was probably born in water. So <laughs> I'm always looking for an opportunity. You learned how to swim after your, your Keta experience. I learned how to swim after my Keta experience. I've never looked back. <laughs> so if you're looking for waterfalls, Volta Eastern, 
two strong candidates. Very strong. Two strong candidates. Very, for, very strong. But, yeah. Which is the highest waterfall in Ghana? Is it the Bli? I think it's really, it's really the waterfalls. Really falls. Yeah, the, the upper and the lower falls. Oh, there are two. It's upper and lower. Two, it's upper and lower. Because the upper falls, there's a pool. And then there's another. Then it falls again, and then there's a pool at the base of it. Oh, wow. So, yeah, the rivers is epic. What about Ku? I've never been there. I'm looking forward to going there. Is there anything there? Ku is... I don't... I'm, I'm at loss for... See, Ku is very, very interesting mm. first off you approach this huge monolith of, of a rock you know and then you you, you so you go through in coco in coco in itself is an experience before you even climb the mountain mm -hmm. then you climb the mountain and you are the, it's it's almost cosmopolitan in a way yeah. you know you go through these towns but one of the most striking aspects of Kou is the mansions you see I'm um, believer. Um, when I say mansions, I'm talking about architectural masterpieces, edifices. Wow! <laughs> in the hills, in the in the mountains. In the mountains. The, 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 I don't know whether to say the sad thing for me is that in a lot of cases they're empty. Really? Because they've been built as statement pieces. Just say I've made money, ah. and this is where I'm from. So this is my. So yeah, once in a year maybe I'll come and be around for easter or something like that but i'm like this this alone can be a hotel it's a draw don't even make it or make it an airbnb yeah you so know. that if somebody wants to do anything pay to for exactly. one week don't exactly don't just leave it empty don't just leave it empty because i feel that buildings kind of deteriorate when they stay empty for too yeah, long yeah, right. have you been to Kuo during easter is it as interesting as suggested Paragliding I, I, thing? i actually have in, have deliberately avoided going to you don't like going when a lot of people are there no I, I I feel that the crowds take something. Well, I guess for some people, the crowds they just, they are desecrate the attraction. The experience. <laughs> for a purist like you, <laughs> for a purist like me, like no, 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 no. And then for those who want to um, check out history, Coco, uh, 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 is it a Mampong? Uh, there's Mampong for that, and then there's also uh, Bunso. Yes, you Bunso. Know. Is that is that where Krieg is? Bunso Echo Park. Yeah. Okay. There's a Bunso Echo Park yeah. as well. And then Akosombo with all its, um, yeah, it could be a central point to stay and then explore yeah, the explore region. Explore the regions, Because yeah. I think there are many, you could do Volta. Yeah, and Akosombo is interesting in and of itself because Akwemufie is right there. Yeah. Um, if you want to see the keys to the Usu Castle, there's there. Akwemufie. Yeah. Um, within the Akwemu Gorge, you can hike up to the top. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a very special bed, which I think is found in only three or four places in the world. The Picatatis, which is also found up there on the the the, the Akwemu Gorge. The yeah, I, I, Akwemu, I'm interested in Asameni. Yes, uh, I think it's, it's so a statue, a statue of him, right? Solid, in, uh, solid, strong. Atimpoku. Solid guy. Yeah. What about say Ashanti? You know, Ashanti is in a lot of our history and our folklore. Yeah. So I don't know if there's anything else. You have to do Menshia, obviously. Yes, you have do to the do. military museum. You probably center. do uh, Bosom Tree and Boti, uh, the Kente place, Bonyre. Uh, Bonyre. Um, you, you should do uh, the KJTR market as well. Okay. Bosom Tree, definitely for sure. But there's also, for me, a hidden gem in Kumasi mm -hmm. uh, called the Owabi Wildlife Sanctuary. Yeah. Wildlife Sanctuary. Yeah. Is it? In Kumasi? In Kumasi. I thought the Owabi had a, a water or something. Yeah, so if you want to do if you want to do bird watching, Owabi. That's the place to do it. And they also have they also have a, a bamboo cathedral in there. In Owabi. In Owabi. I see. Beautiful, beautiful place. Beautiful place. Ashanti is the one of the largest regions in that yeah. enclave, right? Of course there's BA now. So have you done Bosuntri before? Yes. I have done Bosuntri um, a number of times. Mm. Uh, Bosom tree is is interesting. It's it's calming. It's it's yeah. peaceful. It's it just appears it, 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 because it's it's hidden. You see, yeah. it's it's you know they say it's, it's it was formed by a meteor a meteorite strike. So yeah. I guess what happened was the meteorite pushed up the earth around it. So there's a ring of hills around it. So when you go make your way through the hills down, it's, it's it just shows up. It's unbelievable. Beautiful. I see. And of course, you were saying earlier on that you would do the, the was it the, is it the Dija, the Dija, Dija National the Dija Park? National this is Park, Ashanti, 
uh, Bono East, yeah. Volta. Yeah. I, I, I see that the DJ National Park is probably going to take us just two weeks to be in there. And it's really pretty large, actually. It's big. It's huge. It's, it's huge. Huge. Is there anything of interest in the Eastern Corridor? A few of my friends, like Sander, Kojo, they usually would drive Volta, Oti, uh, cross the river, pontoon, and go. That, I, I guess because the road hasn't been done well, a lot of people don't really see yeah, that side as a... It's, it's, again, the landscapes. I mean, for me, mm. the beauty of the surroundings mm. alone Mm. has an effect on me, has an effect on my, my state of mind, mm. has an effect on my thought process and all of that. Mm. And those areas have it. Mm. Those areas are, at once, it's pristine, so you're, you're, you're delighted to be there. But then at the same time, you're sad that you're the only one who's, you know, ready to go through the ordeal of, you know, driving through here to see some of these things. Because I believe that we should all, really, we should all explore our country. Steve, really great talking to you. It's a um, pleasure. If there's more information we need about your travels, where can we find that? Um, you can find more information on, first of all, uh, on Instagram and uh, Facebook, Chasing Waterfalls Africa, or my personal um, Instagram page at steve.abebio. Um, you can also find me on Facebook, you know, steve.abebio. I have a whole bunch of images there Fantastic. as well. Fantastic. We'll follow you. Thank you for talking to us. We'll be speaking to Steve Abebio, who is a world traveler. He's a filmmaker. He does all kinds of interesting things. Definitely visit your country. And this is the Heritage Month on a series. My name is Ben Aravle. We've had a great time talking and watching. We'll be with you next time. Bye-bye.